Before we get into the fantasy news, I have something I must say. In the last fantasy news, I made a tremendous error. A Tad Williams blurb was released, and I mistakenly did not do my research thoroughly enough, ended up claiming that upcoming book is called Empire of Grass, when in reality, the upcoming book is called The Navigator's Children. Empire of Grass has been out for quite some time, so even the cover I revealed was old news. It's been quite some time since I made such a big error on fantasy news, and I'm being honest, it's just me here. This is a solo operation. Things like this will happen in the future as well, and I apologize for that. The day I was collecting these stories, I had a fairly bad migraine, so I was not doing my job up to the standard I really want myself to be put at. My fault. I will do better. Sorry for the error. Let's go ahead and jump into the fantasy news. Let the fantasy news flow! Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have two fantasy news in one week for the first time in ages because we have just that many amazing stories. So let's go ahead and kick this off with the first bit of news here that I am very excited about. And that's gonna be a cover reveal from Gareth Hanran. We have the Broken God cover. Orbit Books has posted this to their Twitter and it looks like this. A little bit more time so you can look at it. Ooh, it's got a lot of blue. I like blues and book covers. Hintity hint about my book cover. And just to kind of answer this question, I will be doing a fantasy news next Tuesday that will also have a bunch of updates for my book, including the cover. So look forward to that. I'm excited to get it to you next news. Let's just go ahead and springboard in some adaptation news because that's gonna be the focus today and we have some pretty awesome stuff. Starting with the fact that actually I'm working on a video of like series that haven't been announced to be adapted yet that I'd really love to see adapted. One of those just got announced to be in the works over at Netflix, and that is Red Wall. This is going to be brought to us by the same creators who made Over the Garden Wall, which I'm showing art of now, and hell's yes. Like, for sure, love this adaptation, wanna see it 100%, for several reasons. It's very much so accessible to younger audiences, and with the growing up of fantasy that's happening, I'm a little afraid sometimes that the younger audiences are being left behind. So seeing something that's going to be a major Netflix adaptation that's accessible to all ages means we can keep brainwashing them young to sustain the genre. If you have children, do your duty, get them into Redwall, get them into His Dark Materials, get them into Narnia if that's your taste, whatever, whatever you need, just keep the younger generation in. <clears throat> Excuse me. What? What are we talking about? Yeah, I'm very excited for Redwall to be adapted over at Netflix, and I like that Netflix is really bringing the fantasy like adaptations regularly. They're not always rock solid hits with them, but hey, at least they're supplying us, and I'm not gonna complain about that. Next news. I know what you want me to talk about, so I'm just gonna go ahead and touch on this because it's really cool. We officially have our Joel and Ellie casting for the upcoming Last of Us adaptation over at HBO. Starting with Joel, originally, yesterday and the day before, rumors were circulating that Maharshala Ali had been offered the role of Joel. And that was already like, oh, that's good. I love Maharshala Ali, Oscar winning actor. I would not be upset by him getting the role in any way, shape or form. But it's been confirmed that he was not the one who got the role. Instead, it's actually going to be Pedro Pascal. That's right. The guy who's the Mandalorian will also be Joel. So the Mandalorian who was tasked with watching the child will now watch over a literal child. I love that, brilliant. Pedro Pascal, 100% down for him for this role. He's a wonderful actor, and from what I've seen in real life, a great guy, and I'm 100% in favor of him here. His talent as an actor is great. If you have not seen him in his stuff outside of The Mandalorian, I recommend you do. He's someone who has quite the range and dramatic weight he can bring to the screen but he's only half of the talent we have to care about here. We also have Bella Ramsey, who you might know from season six of Game of Thrones. Unfortunately, I can't speak on much of her talents outside of her appearance in that season, but for a young actress, I thought she absolutely brought it there. Something that stands out for me though is I've not seen either of these people floated ever for potential fan casting to these roles, but I'm also seeing everyone be pretty happy, at least from the places I'm looking. Fans are down. People are like, hell yeah, this is a great Joel Ellie combo. So I'm more excited than I was before this casting was announced for this adaptation. And I'll reiterate what I said before, The Last of Us, it's, it's the video game adaptation that does not only have the potential to be good, 
but genuinely great. And I want this to do for the gaming community what so many people have been asking for an adaptation to do for so long, and that is prove that storytelling and gaming can be on that truly great level. And HBO behind it, the directors that are attached, this casting, the writers that are attached, I'm just, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really hoping here this pulls through. This and the Halo adaptation, I would say are the ones that have the most potential, though the Halo adaptation for very obvious reasons has greater mountains to climb than in a Last of Us adaptation. So I'm a little less hopeful there, very hopeful here. And the last thing I wanna do is leave you guys with a question. Now that this is the dynamic duo who's going to be trying surviving in the post-apocalyptic American landscape, what do you feel about the adaptation right now? And what are some changes or possible inclusions from things from the second game you'd like to see in the first season? How do you want them to structure this out? I'd love to know what you think in the comments down below. Let's go ahead and get in the rest of the news after we pay some bills here from a word from today's sponsor. And this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is the online learning what what's the word community where you can go ahead and start picking up skills on the daily to share with others whether you're just looking for a new hobby an interesting trick or to start a new career path skillshare provides a solid firm foundation for you to springboard off of and begin a new phase of learning for yourself yes it costs as little as basically a streaming service a month if you use the yearly subscription plan now you got to give them a hand here for having classes like emily gold's 10-day writing challenge you want to have a book to come out pretty soon writing challenges are a great way to get through any blocks you may have and start your momentum going. What are you going to be doing instead? Rewatching Gilmore Girls for like the fifth time? Rory, Dean, and Jess are going to have the same drama they did the last five times you watched it. So why not instead go ahead and start a free trial of Skillshare today using the link in the description down below. Other hand jokes. I only managed to squeeze one in there. I wanted to do more. How about I just end on this? All right, so we have one last piece of casting news I wanna to touch on here, and that is that we have a role confirmed for the Wheel of Time, for an actor that's been known to be attached for a minute. Amr Chadha Patel has had his role to be confirmed of Ingtar due to a change to his CV that was caught by the watchseries.com. Yeah, I'm down for that casting for Ingtar. Unfortunately, I'm not familiar with this actor's work, but he has a look to him that I appreciate for the role, and I'm just honestly happy to hear Ingtar's in it. I like Ingtar. Yay, good Wheel of Time news. Next news. So you guys were responded quite strongly here on the channel for me actually covering board game reveals, and I'm gonna bring you another one. CD Projekt Red, yes, they've been in the news for some very negative reasons, but I am mentally exhausted and don't wanna get into negative news right now. So we're gonna talk about a positive piece of CD Projekt Red news, and that is the announcement of a Witcher board game from them. Heck yes, let's go ahead and take a look. The Witcher Old World has been created in cooperation with Go On Board. The game will ask players to take on a role of Witcher adepts and explore the monster-infested continent from times long before Geralt of Rivia. Ooh, I like that. This has me excited because I think the Witcher continent is actually a really fascinating fantasy world and the idea of being able to go way back in times long before Geralt and see what's going on in the times of Witchers at their peaks is wonderful. Obviously the storytelling potential is a bit limited here due to it being a board game. They can't exactly have like thick novel level, all kinds of stuff for you to go through. But hey, any kind of immersion in a fantasy world, I'm pretty down for. And I will add this to the list if you guys are interested of board games I'd like to review here on the channel. But the first one I want to review is that upcoming Red Rising game. And in a, if this is your thing piece of news, Tim over at Hello Future Me has finally released his review of the Avatar The Last Airbender movie. So if you would like to see the largest Avatar The Last Airbender fan possibly in existence go in depth about the M. Night Shyamalan adaptation of that movie for over two and a half hours. To put that fully in reference, the movie itself is just an hour and 40 minutes. I'll have it linked down below. I think it's the most thorough movie review I've possibly ever seen. And in a quickie piece of news we're gonna cover here today, the Game of Thrones spinoff show House of the Dragon is reportedly going to begin production this spring. Yeah! And the most negative piece of news I could bring myself to cover here today just because I am mentally exhausted is The Mandalorian has lost one of its lead actresses. Gina Carano has been dropped by The Mandalorian show due to some 
let's call them bonkers stupid statements she made on Twitter. Basically things that were minimizing vaccines, encouraging people not to wear masks, trying to delegitimize the election. This is reportedly happening after a while ago, John Favreau did go up to bat defending her saying, no, we can keep her on the show. She'll get in line, she'll stop this stuff. She then did it some more. And now Lucasfilm is saying that her comments are abhorrent and she has been removed from the Mandalorian show. I just, Mm. Next news. Okay, I'm gonna talk about something a little bit alternative here to close out the fantasy news, and that is going to be a YouTube video that was posted to the Unreal Engine channel called Meet the Metahumans. Free sample now available, Unreal Engine. And this is about the next generation human models. It's just basically showing off a graphical upgrade. And it made me want to just touch on a topic for fantasy news that I think could be a bit controversial because I know people have been wanting these games for ages. I'm kind of glad we have not gotten a ton of adaptations in terms of video games for established fantasy series, yet the longer we wait, and especially right now, now I feel like the time to move, that means we get better and better games. I don't want a Cosmere game that looks like a Skyrim, right? Because Skyrim does not look very good. I want a Cosmere game that is up to date, latest gen, pushing all the boundaries AAA title. And the fact that we just got a bunch of new consoles in people's homes, the fact that we got a bunch of new graphics cards, the fact that we're seeing stuff like this from Unreal Engine means to me, now is the time to strike. Now I want to see another grand epic Lord of the Rings game, a, a Mistborn game, a Poppy War game, Rage of Dragons game, anything. This is the time now where I'm like, I wanna see waves happen in the fantasy genre in terms of gaming adaptations because previous gen consoles for the type of adaptation I would like for a fantasy epic would struggle. And even recently, some of the biggest AAA launches have really struggled to perform up to the bar that we expect on older consoles. And then there's CD Projekt Red Cyberpunk 2077, which is like the worst of all worlds. But we are also seeing a bunch of very ambitious movement in terms of bringing real next gen open world great looking kind of fantasy concepts. And those are the ones I wanna see skinned over or be true with adaptations to the series we love. Would you not want a Red Rising game that's using like the most realistic looking people that has like the best looking appeal? Call me shallow, I like graphics, I really do. So this got me excited. I just wanna to touch on that and see what you guys had to say in the comments down below. And tell me what series would you most wanna see adapted right now by your favorite gaming studio? Like what would be your dream pair up. Anyway, this has been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here, and have a good one, y'all. Peace! And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreons, K1RK and Harold Fell. Have a good one, y'all.